cream. Hey, hey, Mike. Um, not a whole lot of offensive help for um, Tina and Leilani today. Kind of just your thoughts of what was going on on that end of the floor. Um, you know, they uh, they made a huge focus on Tina, and yet she still found ways to get assists and to um, score. I mean, she worked hard. Leilani's, you know, in a good groove probably right now shooting the three. Um, they put physical players on Ariel, and she had a tough first half and a better second half. But we need other people to step up and make shots. I mean, Megan, Megan, I thought, and, and Shavante did a decent job. Um, but, you know, it's, it's tough when, you know, two games in a row, we've had, you know, two or three people that start have, you know, not great shooting nights. Um, it's just so hard when you're shorthanded and you're tired. Um, you have to make those shots, and we're not right now. Let's, you know, that's just the way it is. Was that um, a little bit of your thinking with going with Shabante to start the second half? I mean, you know, Sydney's coming back off that ankle injury. Uh, she hasn't looked 100%. Uh, she was struggling, and Shabante could give us some help by guarding uh, Agumba Wale and Alicia Gray. Um, you know, give, give Goomba Wally credit. I mean, she made some very, very tough shots uh, with a hand in her face. I mean, that's what she does. Um, but I just felt like in the second half, we needed a more physical presence on defense. And we had a great third quarter. I mean, we got going. Um, we, win this, we win the second half by five. Um, but we just put ourselves in too much of a hole in the first half. That's what I was going to ask. What was the message at halftime? Well, the message was change the lineup. Uh, play each possession, play better defense. I thought we played too many defensive possessions um, in the first half where on our closeouts to shooters, we didn't get a hand up high enough on them. Uh, I thought they got too many good looks um, that they can make. Um, and then, you know, I mean, you have to, you have to be able to score a couple times to keep it, you know, from being in transition for them. Um, I mean, we were in the teens in the first half, you know, we had, we had 30 at halftime. We scored almost as many in the third quarter as we did the entire first half. We're tired. Uh, we're beat up. Uh, it's not an excuse. It's just what is. And we got to go home and get some rest and get recalibrated. We got three games in the next two weeks uh, with some practice time to try to get better. And how was Ariel feeling? Um, I know the back was bothering her beforehand. How'd she hold up throughout? I don't know. I don't even ask those questions. <laughs> I'll, I'll, that'll be the question I ask tomorrow morning or late tonight, how she held up. Cause a lot of times, you know, players playing on adrenaline and everything else and they're playing hard. Um, but, you know, they're not going to tell you they're feeling crappy because they want to play. And so, you know, at 10 o'clock tonight, she might say she's feeling bad. I don't know. And I don't, you know, that's, that's just something if players tell me they're ready to play, they play. Sounds good. Thank you. Yep. Emily. Hi, Coach. Um, I want to ask you about Tina Charles, you know, had another double double today, despite the loss, you know, coming from you, you who coached her during her first year in the league and now is coaching her again during one of the best years of her career. You know, what do you think makes her so consistent for you guys this year? And, you know, how have you seen her develop? from from that first year to now? Well, I had her for three years. So her MVP year was my third year. So I saw her grow through that. And then when she went to New York after I left Connecticut, um, you know, they, the team was centered around her. And, you know, as the team was good when she first got there, you know, she was great. And then as the team uh, got older and didn't have as many good players, um, you know, she was seeing double and triple teams and probably uh, tried to force some things just, you know, to try to make things happen for her team. This year, uh, she's in a situation where um, she's kind of back to having the offense run around her a little bit, uh, partly out of necessity, but, you know, she's got some pretty good shooters around her. Uh, you wouldn't know at the last two games, you know, because we've struggled. But in general, you know, when we've had Natasha and Maisha and these guys around her, uh, there's a little bit of a balance to our offense. And as we add people back in, uh, to get easier. But I think, you know, I said it a couple of times. I mean, here's somebody who was highly motivated to come in and prove herself to the world that I'm still one of the elite players. And so she came in incredible shape. I mean, I don't know if I've ever had a player come in better shape than she did um, 
to this training camp. And so she was absolutely ready to go. And then she's worked on her game. I mean, she's improved her three point shooting. Uh, she's improved her ball handling. And so, you know, she feels like probably she's a lot more complete player than she was when I coached her 10 years ago, nine years ago, whatever it was. Thanks so much. Jen. Hey coach, uh, you mentioned Megan offhand uh, earlier. What do you think, you know, how do you evaluate her performance today? I mean, she came in, she scored a little bit. Um, she, you know, she played 16 minutes and had six points and four rebounds. I mean, you know, it's a different situation. She's a more natural center, uh, but we played Tina and her together some. And so, you know, there's a couple tough defensive matchups, but I thought, you know, she's done a good job um, in the short amount of time. I mean, I, you know, that's something we'll see how it goes going forward. Now, how much stock do you put in the plus minus? Cause they're kind of all over the place today. Yeah, they are. We do put some uh, stock into it. I mean, that's kind of why I made one of the changes at halftime. Just, you know, Shavante was giving us, uh, you know, a decent amount. And, you know, it's, I mean, when you lose, you're going to be a minus no matter what. So um, you guys can make it of, it of it what you want. I'll keep my thoughts about the rest of it to myself. All right, last one for me. Uh, the broadcast mentioned that someone isn't traveling back with you today. Is that Ariel? Yeah, she's staying here to see her family. And she'll rejoin you guys like Monday or something? Yeah, I think she's coming home tomorrow night. We don't practice until Monday. Got it. Thank you. You bet. That's it, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. If anyone has any questions for Tina, please raise your hand. We will start with Kareem. Hey, hey, Tina. Hi. What did you guys talk about at halftime? It was a pretty big difference between that first half and second half. It was just a sense of urgency. You know, Alicia Clark had mentioned it um, at the end of the game. You know, we have to be very aware of how we start games. And um, that urgency that we had in the beginning of the third is the same urgency that we definitely needed um, in the beginning of the game. You know, Enrique got off in the beginning and having Shavante start made a big difference. You know, I know that personally from Shavante. She's a big defensive stopper, takes her assignments very personally, and um, that definitely helped us. But I think we dug ourselves in a little bit of a hold uh, too, too early to get out of. And that was going to be my next question. You know, what was Enrique doing so well or, or what were you guys struggling to do against her on, you know, when you guys were on defense, obviously? I mean, she's a great player. You know, I, I think anyone, when you're going against the top players in WNBA, you know, you're not going to totally shut them down. You know, you just want to make it hard for them. And, and she made big shots. They made a lot of threes. They were going in the beginning. Um, she gets to the basket. She was doing what Enrique does. And just kind of offensively, you know, outside of you and Leilani, not a whole lot going on on that end. Is that a shots just not falling kind of thing or, or, or something that you guys need to be doing a little bit better on that end of the floor? Um, shots not falling and just need to identify where people need their spots. Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy that uh, Ariel Atkins, you know, stayed confident throughout the game, um, taking shots and still being in an attack mode and then, you know, being a professional and picking it up on the defensive end and just helping out. So that was big. Cool, cool. That's all for me. Thank you. Jen. Hey, Tina. Um, you know, first possession of the game, you've got a rookie on you and you take it to the basket and score. Do you take that personally or is that just, you know, looking at the situation and saying, I need the ball right now? No, I, I, it didn't matter who was guarding me. Could have been Elizabeth Cambage, Sylvia Fowles. I would have done the same thing. Um, I have respect for every player in this league. You know, I was once a rookie myself. I didn't take it personal at all. I'm just doing my job. And then, uh, you know, you mentioned Shavante earlier, but can you talk a little bit more about, you know, the impact Shavante had today in general? And, you know, if you want to talk more broadly about the impact she's had this season as well. It's a big impact, you know. Shit, I wish we utilized her more. Um, I, I know Shavante. She, uh, she's going to get stopped. She takes her assignments personally, especially on the best players. Um, to me, I think she should be a coach when she's done playing. Um, she's so defensive-minded, and that – happens when you come from an organization like Indiana and being under Lynn Dunn and being under Steph White and playing with Tamika Catchings like they took defense personally and that's why I was able to learn a lot from her through my tenure in New York but that's that's Z. 
And how much are you looking forward to, you know, coach just mentioned you guys have three games in two weeks as opposed to three games in five days. Uh, how much are you guys looking forward to, you know, maybe having a little more practice time or, or some time to work on things? Definitely. You always um, are thankful for time off, you know, especially myself and everyone else is playing big minutes. Um, but you definitely want to get back out, out there so you can get this bad taste out your mouth. So, um, you know, God willing, we'll be prepared for, for Connecticut and it'll be a better showing. Thanks, Tina. Mm -hmm. That's it, Tina. Thank you. Okay. Hey, hey, Ariel. How you doing? Hey, Kramer. I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, want to ask, well, very specifically, how are you in terms of your back? You just, just how's it feeling right now? Yeah, I mean, it's feeling all right. I got through the game, so we're good. Was there ever a chance that you weren't going to, weren't going to go out there today or nah? Go Olympian! Oh God, um, I don't know. I was just trying to make sure that I was good to go, to be honest with you. Um, so they were just checking it out, making sure everything was healthy. So felt good. So I was able to play. Gotcha. Anything you can do as far as, you know, what kind of treatment are you doing trying to, you know, I guess stay as loose as possible, I suppose. Yeah. Um, Honestly, what you just said, just trying to stay as loose as possible, not let my back tighten up on me as if I'm a 50-year-old woman. <laughs> um, wanted to ask about the offensive end of the floor, you know, um, just in general, you know, wasn't a whole lot of help out of outside of, um, you know, Tina and Lay. Yeah. The guy going in that second half a little bit. Is that just shots not falling or you guys need to do something a little bit or, or is it something with, um scheme moving the ball around that you guys need to kind of improve a little bit yeah um I mean I'll put that on me honestly um I need to be more aggressive I can't come out the gates uh being passive I have to be more aggressive um so that we can have a more balanced scoring sheet and Tina kind of mentioned a, a, a sense of urgency um the need for a sense of urgency coming out mm -hmm. is is that kind of um is that a little bit new? Because you guys had been, you guys kind of had been coming out strong early. Yeah. Was that kind of a fluke today, or 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 is it kind of a thing that you guys had to kind of reinforce and make a um, priority again? I think it's something that we need to reinforce as a priority. Uh, once you kind of do something and it starts to become a little bit of a habit, we stop talking about it a little bit. And that's not just what is coming out with a sense of urgency. That's you know with anything in life. Like once you get used to it, you expect to become a constant. Um, but within this game and how good this league is, it's something that we need to constantly remind each other of is to come out with urgency and aggressiveness because, I mean, the games are maybe like one and a half games between the top four and the bottom. So, um, yeah. And just one last thing from me. Um, obviously, a banged up road trip started off well, kind of slowed down here the, um, the last two. But what's the biggest thing you guys take away from this trip? We're more than capable when we lock in mentally and do what we need to do, over-communicate, do the small things that we're trying to get better at, uh, we're a tough team to beat. Cool, cool. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Jen? Bring me here. stealing all my questions. Um, Ariel, who's who's bothering you over there, by the way? Who like uh, They're just walking in and through. It's yeah. so everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, so, you know, in preparing for, for Dallas, how helpful was it to have, you know, a couple of folks in Teresa and Megan who have played for Dallas before? Um, yeah, I mean, it's always helpful. I think this is the first year that we've really had players from other teams that can kind of help us out with um, calls and different things like that. And anything in particular? You know, is it just like learning their play calls or is it tendencies? You know, what is most helpful to hear? Coach T said Alicia was helping you guys out with Seattle too. So, mm -hmm. you know, what yeah, mainly, is the biggest advantage? I feel like mainly it's play calls and what people like to do in certain situations has been super helpful. Um, because at the end of the day, you still have to play basketball. You can't cheat the game. So it's like just trying to get those play calls to be helpful. But then again, like if they call the play, they're not necessarily going to do exactly what we want them to do. Um, so it's just a matter of getting a little bit of help, I guess, but at the end of the day, we still have to play. 
And last question for me, uh, you know, how does it, how does it feel to be in your home? Coach said you were going to stay, you know, maybe another day or two, but yeah. you know, how was it? Obviously not the results you wanted, but, right. but how was it to be back in Texas? It feels great. Um, got to see some of my family stands. I saw my goddaughter in the stands. Um, so it, it feels good to just have that loving energy uh, from my family around me. Um, and I'm super excited to see my grams today. Thank you and enjoy the time. Thank you. That's it, Ariel. Thank you. Awesome. I'm out of here. Hey. <laughs> what up, Shabate? How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I um, want to start with that second half. You know, what was the biggest difference? You kind of, you know, you started the second half. Um, you know, you guys outscored them in the second half. What was the biggest difference between that and the first? I just think we turned um, our intensity on, de on the defensive end up a little bit. I know when we came in at halftime, we talked about um, we was allowing Dallas to freely move the ball um, in the first half. So they was pretty much getting whatever they want. Um, so when we came in in the halftime, we, we, we tried to make adjustments and just knew um, if we could be physical, at least with them, we can slow them down a little bit. And I think, you know, for the most part in the second half, we did that. On the end of the other end of the floor, is it a case of shots just not falling or or kind of need to get back to basics of moving the ball a little bit more? Yeah, I think sometimes we get in the um, offensive flow of just jacking up shots sometimes um, when we can get it in the paint, whether it's giving it to Tina or TP or, you know, us guards getting in there, creating for each other. Um, so I think for the most part, I think sometimes we just get complacent and just start taking bad shots when we don't need to. And, you know, sometimes that can lead to the other team momentum, um, like it did some, some part way through this game with Dallas. So I think, you know, for us, um, thank God this road trip is over. We can go back home, regroup, we get back together and focus on our games um, that's coming up this week. Speaking of the road trip being over, you know, started well, didn't end as as good. Um, biggest takeaway just from the entire trip? I just think it was a team that fought hard, um, you know, under, you know, so many circumstances of losing so many pieces due to injuries right now. I think we what, what we did great on this road trip is we stayed together and we fought through everything, whether it was good or bad. Um, we know everything is not going to be perfect and it ain't going to be glitter and go. We just got to remain together. Um, like I said, we go back home, regroup, get ready for the next couple games we got coming up before the Olympic break. Perfect. Appreciate you, like always. Always, Kareem. Jen. Hey, Sharante. Hey, Jen. Got to ask you, uh, how how good is it to have your dance buddy back in care? Oh, man, it's real good. All we need is one more person, right? All right. I'm missing is Tosh right now, but it feels good just to have an extra body <laughs> with us. Forget the dancing right now. It's just it just feels good to have you know bodies to come on with us with this you know road trip. Yeah, that was my next question. You know, I I know she only played 12 minutes, but but could you guys feel a difference having those 12 minutes distributed? Yeah, anytime we can get anybody that can just get a minute to help you know anybody get a breather. Um, is great for us. I know when we seen her yesterday, we were so excited because it was like, yes, we got one more body added to us um, on this road trip. So um, I think just having her here, Kiara here, it, it was a plus for us. So are you texting Tosh, like hurry up? Yeah, I, I, I've been texting Tosh every day telling her I miss her. So I can't wait to see her when we get back to DC. Um, I know she's excited to get back and can't wait to get back with us as well. Last question for me, you know, first play of the game, when you guys on the bench see that Tina's got a rookie on her, are you just like lighting up? Barbecue me. <laughs> That's barbecue. Go to work. That's all we could say. Go to work. Do not let her stop you. And you seen, I think it was the first two possessions, I think we went in at her. Um, but yeah, we got to tell her, welcome to the big leagues. Like this ain't, you know, college, the big 12, this WNBA, you go on one of the best you know, players in the game right now. Thank you, Shavante, and safe travels home. Thank you. I think that's it. Thank you, Shavante. See you. Thank you.